And Adam Syracuse has had a very solid season. Cuse comes in 11 and four overall, two and two in ACC play. And I think to this point, Syracuse has beaten all the teams that it's been better than and lost to the teams that it's not as good as. And I know that's a very kind of basic statement, but, you know, a lot of their wins are against teams they absolutely should beat. New Hampshire, Canisius, Colgate, Chaminade, Cornell, uh, Niagara. Um, But they have a couple nice ACC wins at home against Pitt and BC, both of which I think are solid teams. Um, They also lost by 20-plus at Duke and at Virginia. They lost to Tennessee and Gonzaga early in the year in the uh, Maui event that was played in Honolulu this season. So, remember, they are in a bit of transition. Adrian Autry, who is a longtime assistant there, former player for Syracuse, is now the head coach, taking over after Jim Beheim's uh, long tenure. They are not playing that 2-3 zone that they became so known for exclusively. They do play man-to-man now. Um, they'll mix in some zone, of course, but uh, they are playing more man-to-man. Um, Judah Mintz is still there, really good player. Um, had a good year a year ago. He's their leading scorer at, at better than 18 points per game. Uh, J.J. Starling, who had a good year for Notre Dame last year, um, has transferred to Syracuse. He's their second leading scorer. And some other familiar names, Chris Bell, Malik Brown. I mean, I, they are those typical Syracuse wings of really long, rangy, athletic guys um, that are dangerous slashers and, and really fit that 2-3 zone, but are also just athletic, good basketball players. So, um, Adam, I... I think this is a good team. I think Carolina right now is a better team, but Syracuse is certainly capable of coming in and and competing and winning this game. Um, For Carolina, the Tar Heels, in my mind, can't say, "Woo, got through that tough road stretch, boys. We're rocking and rolling. Let's go have our chicken sandwich and then go play at home here against Syracuse. They've got to be ready to go um, because Syracuse is, is a team that is good enough to win, that needs, I think, a signature win to kind of get the season past just cruising along on where you hope they want to be a little bit better than, if that makes sense. They need something that is, they beat somebody that maybe they're not supposed to. Um, so to me, uh, Carolina's got to come up and, and be ready to play. Yeah, I think the, the Judah Mintz matchup continues the recent trend of the other team has one really good player that you need to figure out a way to stop. In the past, this would have been the leaky black job. Now it's the whole team job. And I think Mintz is a different player than the type Carolina's had to stop recently, like a Blake Henson or a PJ Hall or even a Joe Girard um, or a DJ Burns. So it's a different type of matchup. Carolina will have to play him really well. He's really good. Yes. Um, one of the better individual players Carolina will have seen this year I do think the Tar Heels are good enough that probably one player probably isn't going to beat them at this point in the season. So Syracuse would need some contributions elsewhere. But like you said, I also don't think Carolina is good enough that this is just a coronation and they come back to the Smith Center and everybody's so proud of them for what they did on the road and they can just show up and go through the motions and get an easy win. As we've seen in college basketball this week, you, the Tar Heels aren't good enough to do that. Um, an important injury for Syracuse worth noting, Naheem McLeod, who's 7'4", was at Florida State, transferred to Syracuse. And Syracuse often has that big guy, in the, I mean, really, really big guy in the middle. McLeod has played well for them, but he did not play in Syracuse last game against Boston College. It was classified as a foot injury, right foot injury, and out for an unspecified amount of time. Uh, head coach Adrian Autry, after Syracuse's game against BC, said, quote, we should know something in a couple of days and we'll be able to go from there. So it doesn't sound like McLeod will be available tomorrow against Carolina. Don't know that, um, at least at the time that Adam and I are recording. Um, but it doesn't sound like he will be available. And, you know, he's a guy that was being, you know, was blocking two shots a game, was uh, averaging, you know, better than four or five rebounds right in that range per game and as a defensive presence. So that, that may change Syracuse some too. And Syracuse doesn't have a ton of depth already and doesn't have a ton of experience already. And I, I think that's two categories where Carolina is clearly better than them at this point in the season. First of two meetings, and they uh, will come about a month apart. Carolina plays, in fact, exactly a month apart. Carolina plays them on February 13th in the formerly known as Carrier Dome coming up. 
Adam's already got that trip circled on his calendar. I bet it's going to be gray and cold. Slightly cold. That's that the day. forecast. February for 13th. There will be snow on the ground. Will it be falling on that day? TBD. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It won't be falling in Chapel Hill for the tip-off club before that game tomorrow. Oh, Adam, could you tell me more about the tip-off club? Well, you might think. Now, with this noon tip-off, which noon. Remember, is Jones already game, told you. this game at noon, Adam? It's at noon. It's I not at you. 1. I got you. If you get there at 1, you'll be like George Lynch at uh, State on Wednesday night and get there like midway through the second half. Sorry, I, George Lynch, one of our favorite players. Okay. You got there a little late, buddy. George Lynch, the largest signature on the big board. <laughs> He's like the North Star that we yeah. base all the other signatures yeah, like, around. Sorry, Howard Lee. My signature <laughs> will be the largest. So tomorrow at noon, Carolina plays Syracuse. But at 10 a.m., the Carolina Basketball Tip-Off Ooh. Club presented by Modelo. Wake and shake. <laughs> yeah. is uh, That'll be the pregame hospitality space. It'll have access for fans to enjoy entertainment, play games, purchase food, both food trucks and stadium concessions, and beverages, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Oh, my. And you'll be able to watch other sporting events on TVs throughout the area. It's located right outside the Smith Center. What this should say is right outside Pod World headquarters. Yeah, we're, that, look, we're looking at the moment at where, just Adam, just close your eyes. Yeah. And, I mean, tip-off club will be there in mere hours. Tomorrow it'll be a beehive of activity. I yeah. walk right past there before every game, and I think, I bet you're enjoying a lot of pregame fun. Adam, i got to tell you something. With this much pregame hijinks how much is it going to cost for me to get into this good question it sounds like I mean, what would you pay Tw- I, 20 bucks maybe anything you ask adam free wow admission is free you'll be right outside pod world headquarters it starts at 10 a.m bang on the glass see if it adam say adam are you yeah. in there yeah just keep doing that until the security officers <laughs> get there and then you should stop uh so look forward to seeing everybody there look it needs to be an awesome crowd at the Smith Center tomorrow. Yeah, any I, mean, issue. I hope it's a good one. I, I, mean, I believe that it will be. Yeah, Saturday afternoon games, ACC, name opponent, normally a good one. Traditional ACC foe. Well, maybe not that, but. Oh, yeah, right. 